Between 1974 and 1991, the Warsaw radio mast was the world's tallest structure. At 646 meters high, it ruled the skies for 17 years and was an integral part of the Soviet Union's radio communication network until a fateful August afternoon when it collapsed during repair works. The last building to hold the top spot for a longer stretch of time was New York's Empire State Building. The 443-meter skyscraper was the world's tallest structure for 23 years, from 1931 to 1954. In fact, there exist only two structures ever built that surpass Warsaw's tower. The Burj Khalifa, the current record holder at 830 meters, and the recently completed Merdeka 118 at 679 meters. The Burj Khalifa has been the world's tallest building since 2009, meaning it still has to retain the title for three more years before it can break the Warsaw radio mast streak. Despite this tower's numerous claims to fame, it is relatively unknown outside of Poland, where it was a symbol of national pride. Perhaps it is because of its incredibly slender frame. A structure's slenderness ratio is the ratio of its length to its width. With a side length of 4.8 meters, the radio mast has a slenderness ratio of 135. This is slenderer than your average strand of spaghetti, which has a slenderness ratio of only 125. Now think about how easy it is to snap a piece of spaghetti. However, although this tower might have seemed fragile, it made up for it with its immense transmitting power. It was a mast radiator, which is a type of transmission tower where the entire steel structure is energized and acts as an antenna. With a one megawatt Swiss-built transmitter, the AM radio programs propagating from this tower could reportedly be heard anywhere in the world, including Antarctica. The structural form of the radio mast was that of a guide steel lattice mast. This is a lightweight steel structure, which connects steel members in triangular shapes known as trusses. You've probably heard that triangles are the strongest shape, and the reason for this is that they cannot be deformed without changing the length of one of the sides. This is unlike a square, which can be deformed into a rhombus by altering the internal angles. To change the length of the sides requires far more energy than changing the angles, thus resulting in a stronger structure. The main advantage of lattice structures is that they are a lot lighter than a solid structure of the same height, thus requiring less materials to build. Furthermore, they have less surface area and are therefore less impacted by wind loading. The world's most famous lattice tower is the 330-meter-tall Eiffel Tower, which is only half the height of the Warsaw Tower. The Eiffel Tower has a wide base, which gives it an almost pyramid-like shape, allowing it to resist overturning caused by lateral wind or earthquake loads. The Warsaw radio mast does not have this wide base, and instead relies on guy lines for lateral stability. Guy lines are steel cables with one end attached to the structure, and the other end attached to a concrete anchor at the ground level. If the structure tries to move laterally away from the guy line, the cables will resist this movement by acting in tension and preventing any further movement. This is due to their large diameter, and thus the large amount of force required to lengthen them. Warsaw Radio Mast had an array of three guy wires arranged at 120 degree intervals and attached to the tower at five different levels. These 15 guy wires ensure the tower is restrained from lateral movements at all heights and can resist lateral loads from any direction. The result is an extremely lightweight yet strong tower that weighs only 400 tons or just heavier than a fully loaded Boeing 747. Access to all levels of the tower, including the top, is essential for repair works and to maintain the aircraft warning beacons. If you aren't interested in climbing the world's longest ladder, you could take the diesel-powered elevator to the top. With room for three people, it is certainly a less physically strenuous method of ascending the tower. However, it is incredibly slow with a return trip time of 90 minutes. The tower has aircraft warning lamps at 16 levels to help pilots avoid the main tower. However, the thin guy lines are hard to see in daylight, not to mention against the night sky. As such, there are six smaller towers positioned around the circumference of the span field of the guy lines to clearly mark the danger zone. Unfortunately, the guy wires were the reason for the tower's eventual demise. When wind interacted with the cylindrical members of the tower, a process called vortex shedding resulted in areas of low pressure alternating on either side of the structure. The structure is attracted towards these low pressure areas and thus begins oscillating in the direction perpendicular to the wind. When the frequency of this oscillation matches the tower's resonance frequency, the amplitude or the distance the tower is displaced 
increases. These repeated oscillations caused fatigue in the steel guy wires as they attempted to restrain the tower from moving. Over the course of a decade of these oscillations, structural inspections revealed some of the strands making up the guy wires had fractured and would require urgent replacement. At 4 p.m. on the 8th of August, 1991, disaster struck. During the repairs, one of the damaged guy lines was disconnected from its anchor point. Before the line could be replaced by two temporary cables, the tower was struck by a wind gust in the exact direction that the removed guy wire was meant to restrain. As a result, the unrestrained section of the tower was displaced by the wind, and this displacement and change in the tower's center of gravity resulted in extreme bending stresses on the tower that it was not designed to handle. Eyewitness reports stated that the tower snapped at roughly half its height, although to this day there exists no footage of the collapse. The simulation you are about to see is a world-first attempt at recreating the collapse of the Warsaw radio mast.
After the towers collapse, the title of the world's tallest structure returned to the Americans with the KVLY TV mast in North Dakota, which managed to hold the title for 16 years until the Burj Khalifa was completed. In the days following the collapse, Polish citizens joked that the world's tallest building was now the world's longest. It is a pity that the world's tallest structure was destroyed by lack of maintenance and a poorly timed gust of the wind. However, the tower will be remembered as a marvel of Polish engineering, respected not only for its height, but its global radio broadcasts. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss future simulations of some of history's most famous structural failures.